So what I'd like to do in this video is show you how you need to configure the firewall on the machine where the enterprise data services are loaded. So there are two areas where you normally have a firewall. You have your border firewall, which is between your uh, internet connection and your internal network. But then normally every machine on your network has the Windows firewall enabled in some way, shape or form. So that's the one that we're actually going to look at right now. So in order to go ahead and configure that firewall on the machine that has the enterprise data service running, you simply go down here to the network icon, right click and choose open network and sharing center. Then you'll go in here into Windows Firewall and then assuming you're logged in as an administrator, you can go here onto advanced settings. And what you wanna do is create some inbound rules. So we go in here and we'll say new rule and these are gonna be port based rules. So we select port because what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow traffic on certain ports to come in. So this rule applies to a TCP port. So we specify what are the ports that you want to open. So as you've seen in my previous uh, demonstrations of how to install enterprise, we have the enterprise data service installed on port 8099 but then I also installed a second enterprise data service for another database running on this machine. So to open up multiple ports, you put a comma, a space, and then 8098. And then that is now opening up both port 8099 and 8098. Then you say next. And what you want to do is you want to allow the connection. And then you'll say next. And then specify which kind of network connections do you want to apply this to. Now normally, I would select all three of these. If they're all active, leave them selected. And then you say next, and we'll give this a name so it can be identified. So this is the enterprise data service inbound connection. And then you say finish. And so now you're allowing traffic to come into this machine on port 8098 and 8099. But there's one other thing you'll also want to do to narrow it down even more, is you only want to allow that traffic when it's coming from the enterprise web servers. So what you want to do is you want to go here into scope, and then you want to only allow traffic from a couple of specific IP addresses. So you choose these IP addresses, and then we say add, and then we put in the following IP addresses, and you can get this from the network documentation. So you've got 212.2.164.153. So we'll add that one. And now we want to add another, which is 87.1.1.1.1. Dot 226 and we'll say okay to that and then one more which is 193.95.153.228 okay and then you'll say okay to that and then you'll choose apply and that is now done say okay and what you've now done is you have allowed traffic to come through on the local network to those ports. If you don't have those ports open, then the enterprise data service will not be able to communicate with um, traffic that makes it through the firewall. Now, when it comes to the external firewall, there are way too many different firewalls that you could potentially be utilizing. But there's a couple of basic rules. The basic rule is this. You need to determine what is the local IP address of the machine where the enterprise data service is loaded on. And you can get that by once again going down here onto Open Network and Sharing Center. You click on the connection and then by clicking on details, you'll see the local IP address. So in this case, I've got a local IP address of 192.168.1.78. So what you need to do is you need to let your network administrators know that they need to forward any traffic 
that comes in to your external gateway on port 8099 or 8098, they need to set up a port forwarding rule that forwards that traffic to this internal IP address. So it'll take any traffic that's coming in to your public IP address that we went through and we identified and we set that up in the enterprise data service configuration and any traffic coming to that public IP address on port 8099 and 8098 and they set up a port forwarding rule to the internal IP address of this machine. If you do that as well as setting up this other firewall rule then you should have no issues whatsoever with enterprise being able to communicate um, with your SAP Business One deployment. And the good thing is, because you've specified that it only comes from those known IP addresses and only on those specific ports, you've locked down your environment as much as you can.